Renaissance, French Low Renaissance, a Greek Revival. There are four or five different types of houses that they built, expecting to get people from Europe to come and live here. But the First World War kept people from Europe coming here. So these houses lay vacant for a while. <laughs> Two young, enterprising black guys saw so more and more black people coming up from the South. And with the war going on, they needed more and more manpower right. to work in factories and all that kind of business. Mm -hmm. So they were sending buses and planes and trains south to bring blacks from the cities to New York so that they could employ them and uh, get these factories going to produce what they needed for the war. <laughs> and these houses, many of them were kind of vacant or not being used well. They had just been built. They were relatively new. And these guys started dealing with the owners, saying, we could get your place rented if you had rooms. Because these were all single-family houses. Uh -huh. right. So there became this movement to change these beautiful mansions into single-room occupancies, into boarding houses, into uh -huh. one-room houses. So that on this floor you could have three rooms, upstairs you could have three rooms. Right. Now you've got nine rooms, you can rent a room for two dollars a month or two dollars a week or whatever it was. And you can start getting some income. So these guys turned the owners on to this and got their commission. And blacks began to move from 59th Street up to Harlem to occupy these areas. Now this house was part of it. And... Um, Around 1940, there was the first renovation of this building that I know of, that I can go back and I can show you the record of. <laughs> and then there was a, another major renovation that took place between 55 and 65, where they even drew the plans, did all of the work. I have all of that documentation. Wow. Um, when they converted this into a single room occupancy building with kitchens and kitchenettes and right. little stoves and little sinks and all kinds of little things so that if you were a single guy, you come and you rent your room and you had this room with a little stove right. and then the bathroom was in the hallway and that was public. Whoever else lived down the hall could use that bathroom um, but they couldn't use your little stove. So yeah. all of that is Function. documented. Um, and this building went through that process. And that's most of the brownstones in this area, or from what area? What areas? Particularly in Harlem, because okay. at that time, blacks were living in what they call San Juan Hill. San Juan Hill was in the 59th Street area. Okay. Uh, after having lived way down on Wall Street, they moved blacks from Wall Street to um, 14th Street. Chelsea area, mm -hmm. from, from, from there, they moved up to uh, 23rd Street area up in Chelsea. They moved, first it was what they call Five Towns, okay. down in 14th Street, where they had the meat packing place mm -hmm. down there. Then they moved from there to Chelsea, and then from Chelsea they moved to 42nd Street. Wow. Then from 42nd Street, blacks moved to 59th Street. And then from 59th Street, they began to pour into Harlem. Wow. And it's interesting how that process takes place because when you go backwards, mm -hmm. you will discover that every place blacks was is now quite fashionable. Hmm. <laughs> so when you begin to understand the process, <laughs> you see what the process is. You know, right. When you go interesting. backwards, you see that when blacks move into an area, they organize it in such a way that the area becomes depressed. Hmm. So when you read the social history of these areas, you see that once blacks move in, services are withdrawn, alcohol and drugs are introduced, right. five more churches go up, and then it becomes a bucket of blood, and then the area gets a name that depresses it. Right. And when you depress the name of an area, uh, the values go down. And then the affluent move out, leaving behind those who are less affluent. And then they are moved out. And now you have a very depressed area that 
in the economic market can be purchased very low, right. wow. fixed up, mm -hmm. and sold really very high. high. Right. So right. blacks became part of the economic structure of Manhattan, and they were in a way used, whether consciously or unconsciously, mm. as part of an economic development program that allowed people who had money to buy low, fix up, and sell high. Mm. But they never benefited right. from the process. Right, of course. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's a part of the history that we don't talk about. But this house was a part of that, that process. So do wow. you, think, you think it's going to be a move now from Harlem anytime? To no, the move now is into Harlem. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Twenty-five years ago, uh, these buildings that were being warehoused by the city and by others mm -hmm. could be purchased from between ten and twenty thousand uh, dollars. Back in the sixties, seventies, and now uh, thirty years later, the same building right. is going to be a million to two and a half million dollars. So you you see in economic terms what I've been describing in social terms. And they already started so calling it what, so high? Who's moving back? Is the I haven't heard that. Right. So high. So high. Well, so high. Well, so high. 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 So